Hello and welcome back to the channel. Thank you for joining the giveaway contest. Cornelius received the canoe and G.I. Jakey received the Albatross Custom t-shirt. I have not received contact information from Victor. So his Albatross coffee mug still waiting. So again, thank you for participating. Stay tuned and we'll do another contest pretty soon. And today, we'll tackle the issue of fixing the classified butterfly articulation. We'll also show you my vehicle project, the Revenant 4x4 armored truck, and show you my progress on the V32 Albatross VTOL gunship. We'll also talk about the Ghost Rider Haslab Engine of Vengeance and the Pulse Gun Reveals and also the Wondar Mattel Creations. Let's get on with it after the intro. Joe classified butterfly articulation. It simply sucks. The design is flawed. You can't get good poses out of your classified figures. For example, the two-handed pistol shooting poses, proper sword downward cutting grip, because you can't get the arms to close and grasp the weapon with two hands. But be troubled no more because we are going to fix it. First, let me demonstrate what the classified figures are doing. Clear? Nothing on the chamber? Classified. Correct way of uh, shooting position. Isosceles triangle, arm straight. If you're old school, weaver, straight, weak arm bent. All right, see that? Classified. We'll fix this butterfly articulation issue once and for all. On the pectoral muscle area, you don't have a proper cut for the arms to move across the torso. I use the hot water method and remove the arms from the socket, leaving the butterfly socket in place, turning it facing backward. I use a Dremel tool at the lowest setting, sanded the side of the chest. I use a fine 220 grit sandpaper and sanded the area. That area is made of rubbery material which suck. And now by doing this I can do the two-handed pistol pose with ease. Look at that improvement. Yay! Here's how I did the modification. Come into my paint booth I'm removing a small amount of plastic on the side of the chest area and I'm doing it at an angle also. This slowly and test for fit if you are not sure how much plastic material to remove. Okay, and with a fine grit 
220 sandpaper. I'm gonna uh, sand that area. Afterwards, I used a clear nail polish on that sanded area so we'll bring back the color and then I'm gonna reattach the hands the neck and head that's all that the Hasbro designer have to do have a generous cut on the pectoral muscle in order for that arm to cross and meet instead we get this subpar product and leave the consumer such as myself to do the fixes works well even with the H harness if you like this please share the video and click the like button and subscribe if you haven't done so yet I also fixed my roadblock V1 the bigger figures like Roadblock Gung Ho, the newer Roadblock Heavy Artillery and Sergeant Slaughter, you can use my method to fix that butterfly articulation. Story Time 1986 Burlingame, Northern California Place, Safeway Many like Pixel Dan Says one dar, Masters of the Universe Wonder Bread mail away never happened. I'm telling you, it did. My brother, mom, and I were grocery shopping. We had just arrived in America, migrating legally yeah. from the Philippines. So Wonder Bread has this promo where you buy 10, that's in 10 loaves, to get 10 proof of purchase plus $4.95 shipping and handling to mail to get your Wondar figure. It was close to my brother's birthday and he begged and kneeled and cried but my mom refused to get him the 10 Wonder Bread. So he missed this opportunity to get the mail away Wondar figure. And here's the new Origin Masters of the Universe Wondar. From Mattel Creations, which sold in less than two minutes, which my brother was fated in getting. I'm happy for him, but I feel sorry for the rest who've missed out. As we know, these billion dollar companies purposely not make enough to meet demands. To hype, to increase the perceived interest and value to these exclusive figures. Haslab Ghost Rider Engine of Vengeance. Interested to know what you think? Did you back the Haslab Engine of Vengeance? In my opinion, billion dollar companies should not do the crowdfunding model. It tells me they're just out for your money and don't really believe in the product or its success. If they do believe that they have a good product with reasonable price, they could just make it. You keep on supporting this and most vehicles for Marvel and G.I. Joe classifieds, you bet it's going to be in the 300 and 400 range. And for classifieds, all we'll get are trouble bubbles, claws, fangs, more motorcycles like the Silver Mirage, and small fries of vehicles. If you did support it, then good for you. If you felt the engine of vengeance was overpriced and you passed, good for you also. I will never buy into any Haslab project. Only vehicle I'm interested in is the Action Force Resvani licensed tank. Bottom line is, collect what you want. I'd rather buy a die-cast car. This isn't even a licensed charger. Cheap. Hasbro PulseCon. It's hard to get excited over digital renders, name reveals, and pre-orders. I have not even received my Outback yet. Serpentor. Did you pre-order it? I heard it sold out quick. I did not. 
I have pretty much all the 3.75 real American hero figures and vehicles. I really don't mind if I find Serpentor or not. Look at his twin 50 caliber machine guns. The ammunition belt is going into the feed ramp. And here's the Darwin Award. It goes back into the butt of the receiver. Jeez Louise! Google's your friend a quick search on how M2 Brownings work and you'll know it needs an ammunition box. You can just have the belt go into the floor of the chariot, suggesting that it would have an ammunition storage inside. Instead of having a home run product, you're gonna let your consumers make fixes and go to a third party machine gun like gridirons to replace your mediocre design. I have one suggestion for you. Stick with laser cannons, which you're good at. It's a shame, it's a very nice vehicle. Lieutenant Falcon, with the head sculpt of a character from Thunderbirds, or Team America. It's so bad, I just gotta have it. Cover Girl. It's definitely my favorite of the reveals. I do notice from the earlier render that there are changes like lighter skin tone. And I prefer the first render with a softer painted face. Why would you go with a shotgun? She works at cramped spaces in the Wolverine. She needs a compact PDW weapon. Brandon Herrera, the AK guy, or I mean shipwreck. Definitely a must have. I'll just get rid of the flintlock pistol. And a pirate from Michaels. Mad Marauder Barbecue. And Crimson Bat, definitely a pass. Yes, to Outback and Torpedo, they look great. I should have waited instead of getting the Tiger Force Outback. Copperhead looks great. His helmet looks a tad small though. And I'll pick up Bazooka I passed on the Tiger Force. Introducing the Revenant 4x4 armored truck. It's inspired by the Tesla Cybertruck's clean lines. The US military uses electric vehicles like the Nikola Reckless. The M5 Ripsaw tank is a radio controlled drone. Those are just a few examples. Let's start with the measurements. Length is 17 inches long. The height is 8 inches. If you're measuring from the bottom to the top of the turret, it's 13 and a half inches. The width is 8 inches wide. Its front tires move left to right retractable side steps to aid the driver and the passenger removable remote control turret with a cannon and anti-tank rockets the roof is removable seats nine figures inside plus one on the machine gun turret doors open got a radio antenna rear opening side door four figures fit in the back I opted for a side opening rear door instead of a ramp because only four passengers sits on the rear the others like the driver and passenger the second row seat, they have their own four doors. The bench folds, so you could load gear, supply, backpacks. It's got a grenade launcher mounted on the side. It's 
galley rear monitor for the passengers to see 360 of the vehicle. They have a control that could switch the camera angles front, back, left and right. And the cameras are right here on the front, on the sides. And on the rear, folding side steps, air condition unit next to the steering wheel and the console control. You could see the battery for the LED headlights. I need to tuck that in. move this seat forward or backward for a smaller or bigger figures there you go on the vehicle roof it has four mounting points bolted to the frame this is for the vehicle being able to be airlift by a helicopter size comparison between the Revenant and the Polaris RZR comparing the Revenant with my light tank the Revenant with a Cobra gun truck and compared with a Cobra Wolf Revenant. 4x4 armored truck Standard level 3 armor Kevlar run flat tires 360 camera view Side opening rear door Long range antenna 30mm cannon 4 anti-tank missiles Night Vision IR Thermal Weapon Sights And finally, here is my progress of the V32 Albatross VTOL Vertical Takeoff and Landing Gunship Inspired by a combination of aircrafts like the V22 Offspray, 280 Valor, and the Halo Falcon the Albatross carries two in the cockpit, the pilot and the co-pilot, night vision IR thermal sights for the weapon, fit a tube to read airspeed, we have a wiper, the Gatling gun main armament, it's got steps for the pilot to climb into the cockpit, Dry barreled main gun. It rotates. Goes up and down. Measurements are 28 inches in length, 11 inches in height, 40 inches when you measure the propeller to propeller with seats 11 figures in the cabin and two on the side mounted guns which brings to a total of 15 figures that it can carry i am working on the engines which tilts for the airplane and helicopter modes i am also furnishing the top exhaust part like the falcons and close off that open space from the wing to the cockpit and I'm working on the landing skids. It will not be wheels. I'm shooting to complete it soon and feature on the next video. And that is all for now. See you on the next one. Take care.